In this video, I'm gonna be giving you a tour of my newly converted cargo trailer, which I've been converting for the past four months. To many of you who are new, my name is Jacob Wagler. I'm an action sports photographer who's passionate about helping brands and athletes level up their media through photography. All right, let's get into the tour. So before we hop inside, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour on the outside. Not much going on, but some things I think you guys would enjoy to see. So on the top, we have a Senville 9000 BTU AC slash heat pump. And the copper lines from this unit runs down from the side, down into the trailer, and then that attaches to my head unit, which you'll see in a minute. So you'll also see something mounted up here, and that is my Starlink unit. So this basically comes on and off. I detach that, put it back on whenever I need Wi-Fi, and I obviously don't leave it up for when I'm traveling because I don't want to get ripped off the roof. So I basically just take that down, put it in my trailer for when I'm traveling, and that cable basically just comes down same place through the side of the trailer where I have this hole, and then that attaches into my router in the trailer. So down here I have two pipes which let my water out. So this is my connector for the shower. So basically, whenever I want to shower, I just hook up my RV connector to this connection here. So I just screw this off like so, and then hook up my RV connector right here, and then just run the hose out to wherever the dumping place is. But really nice, because I can just cap this off whenever I don't need it. Just keeps bugs and things like that out. And then this one is my gray water tank outlet here, which is the exact same setup, but it's just piped out a little bit further to get that nice connection. I have a ball valve under here, which I can just release uh, whenever I want the water to flow. And so that has the tank inside, not underneath the trailer. So the piping just comes down, 90s out, and that's where it comes right here. So at the back here, I have a double door system which just swings out to the side. And I really like this setup because you can just open it up. You don't have to worry about one big door that has to have enough area at the back to release it and let it down. It's just really easy to just like pop these open and your easy access to get into whatever you need to in the back. So up top here, I have a 12 volt LED light bar. I also have a backup slash security cam if I ever had to. It's just wireless, which is really nice. So I can just send it by Wi-Fi into the system, which is in my truck. On this side here, I just have a single window. On the other side, I have double windows. So I have one for my kitchen, which is just a smaller one which you'll see inside, and then I have a larger one, the exact same as this, directly across. So I get nice cross breeze ventilation when this is open. These are just your typical RV windows. And then this system also has a dual axle, which is very nice. This whole trailer can hold up to 7,000 pounds. Right now it's weighing out at around 3,800 pounds. This is my door here, which is kind of my main access door. I can just open it like this. All right, so now as we come inside, this is a deadbolt to lock the door. I have one up top, I have one on the bottom. So then I can just lock it like that. They're really tight. You're really gonna have to reef on this door to even like try and budget. It's really secure. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm probably gonna do a little bit more weather sealing on this door just to make sure that it's nice and tight so that there's no air that can possibly get through this door. So coming in, this is my light switch for my four main pot lights. The back two pot lights are on their own switch. The four main pot lights at the front are on this switch here. And these are dimmable. They're all by Wi-Fi connectable. They're bi-color LED, so I can change really any color that I want, which is pretty cool. All right, let's go to the kitchen space here. All right, so as I come into the kitchen, we're gonna start from top down. Got a nice spice rack here. I've got a little cabinet pantry. So this is where I keep like most of my dry goods and things like that. Really nice small cabinet. And then this right here, down here, as I pull this out, this is my water jug. So I have a lot of issue with acid reflux and things like that. So this is basically just distilled purified water. And so I have like a little pump on top here. So when I turn it on, you can obviously pump the water. So I have that. 
And then this is just a box that I made basically to house the water jug because I didn't really see anything that was kind of like nice and easy to kind of like maneuver around that would kind of like fit the space. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll just make something with a bit of a lid here so I can take this lid on and off. So that's kind of how that works. So this countertop was the only thing that I didn't build or modify for this whole kitchen space, but I bought this four foot long laminate countertop and it's meant to look like wood, which is really nice. It was not as expensive as wood, which was also very nice. Now you might be wondering, okay, how does this guy cook? And so I'll show you a couple ways that I cook. So this first option, I have a induction cooktop, which is back in the back here. Just tuck that back in behind my water jug. So basically I can plug this into my outlet, which is right here. And then I can just cook on this induction cooktop, put it away. This was something that I really wanted to do because I didn't want to get tied up with having a cooktop built into the top of this because counter space is so key within a small space like this. So I wanted as much counter space as possible. And whenever I don't need to be cooking with this, then I can just stash it away and I don't have to worry about that. So this is a really nice piece of equipment. It does take up a little more wattage than what I would like. Induction cooktops are definitely hogs on electricity, but I'm really stoked on this because it's super portable, really functional. So whenever I don't want to use it, slide it back in here and we're good to go. So for my kitchen drawers, I have a three tier system. So this is the smallest, this is the middle, this is the largest. So the top one basically houses all my dishes, all my cutlery, all my cups, things like that. And this middle drawer here basically has um, like storage containers for food, leftovers. Um, this is my mixing stuff, my measuring cups, just kind of like the kitchen tools and things like that. And then on the bottom is just kind of right now, a bit more storage. It's a fairly large drawer. So I'm having a bit of a hard time like figuring what needs to go in here and how to organize it. So these are all soft clothes. So just like really nice to have soft clothes like that. It's always something that I've wanted. And so I was like, gonna make that a priority. Now, as for this fridge, this fridge is a mini fridge, I guess, people would call it like a mini bar fridge. And I love, 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 love the space in the freezer. This freezer is absolutely massive, which is fantastic. I can fit a ton of stuff in this freezer. So this is really nice. Um, and then I have one on the bottom here. So fridge freezer combo. And the reason why I went with a 120 volt was because I knew that it wouldn't be eating up a ton of my solar during the day. But as well, I couldn't justify buying a $1,000 fridge or a $2,000 fridge basically just to save on solar because with that money, I could go buy another solar panel or I could just buy another battery for my Blue Eddy just to charge everything up, which I ended up doing in the end. And I could do that because I didn't buy a $1,000 fridge. So underneath the sink, I slide this door to get access to a little bit more storage. So I have my gray water tank here, which basically just takes the water of my sink, which is really simple, really easy. And then down in here, I have a place for my pans, things like that. And then here I have a collapsible garbage, so I can just take this out. Whenever I'm cooking, the nice thing is I can just pop this out like so. It's got little feet on it. Got this off Amazon, which is great. Just pop it up here like so. And then whenever I'm done with the garbage, after I'm cooking, I can just fold it up, tuck it in. And then this attaches on the side here. I have a little bit of a railing here. And then in here I can fit things like olive oil, I can fit soap down in here. Probably one of my favorite parts of this build is this kitchen sink for a few reasons. I love that it's matte black and it really ties in nice with the space. I've kind of been going for like that black, wood and white. So it's kind of like that modern rustic vibe. And I really, really love that. And as well, 
it's hand hammered. So it's got like these little grooves and divots in it. That's something you kind of see within like those hammered coppered sinks. Um, so I got this off Wayfair for actually a pretty decent price. I think it was just like 200 bucks or maybe a little bit more, but in my opinion, it was a really good deal. It was actually on sale. And then what's underneath is this acrylic gloss. Basically, it's like a thin acrylic sheet. And I think it came in like an 18 by 24 inch. So it was fairly large. I had to cut it down a little bit, which is fine because it's really easy to cut. But I got this off Amazon. So what I did is I basically just put wood underneath this and then glued it on and then kind of like pinch that all together with the sink. So this is nice and tight in here, but I really love the contrast between the mat, the gloss, and it just kind of flows into the space really nice. It flows into the countertop nice. And with the faucet, you definitely have to have one of these, obviously. It's just really nice to have one of the retractable uh, heads on it. So this whole space as a whole, really trying to go for an open concept. So as we carry on into the space, this is the head unit for my mini split AC. I have the remote mounted back in here, so I can just take that out. This is actually its own thermostat. And so basically I can just turn this on. So as I turn it on, I've got a few different modes. I have fan mode, I have auto, I have cool, I have dry, and I have heat. So actually this is not only an AC unit, but it's also a heat pump. So this unit right here, it's a 9,000 BTU system, and this can actually heat up to minus 15, that's degrees Celsius. It really cools this place down extremely fast. And especially with this being insulated as well as it is, it definitely keeps the cold air in here for a lot longer. So it's nice, I just like throw this on for I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes at like 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's like pumping in the space and it stays cold in here for a long time. All right, so throw the remote back in there. And so this right here, moving back in here, this is my couch slash secondary bed. So this right here was really important to me. I wanted a place in which I could just like kind of chill, which I could hang out. But as well, if I needed to have somebody over or if somebody wanted to travel with me for a little bit of time, possibly filming with me or whatnot, it was really important to have somewhere for somebody else to sleep. So this is actually a six foot long bed slash cushion. So it's really nice to be able to stretch out on. I can stretch out on it fine. I'm 6'1". So it's really nice just to be able to kind of hang out on but it's also extremely comfy. Now, with these covers, I've seen a lot of people make these covers, and that was something that I didn't really want to have to get into because it was just kind of one of the last things on the list that I didn't want to have to worry about, kind of managing what material I wanted, how I wanted it done, and all these things. I just kind of wanted to like order something and walk away. And I was researching for a little bit, but I ended up coming across a company called Covers and All. And I'll link them down below. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I really love the work that they did. This is basically like an outdoor cushion. So uh, it's waterproof, it's extremely durable. I believe that you can wash these and it does, you know, have a little bit of a sound to it like that, but it's not, that bad i don't find it that annoying or bad when you like sit on it or move around on it some people might get annoyed so it's not like cotton where it like doesn't make any noise i think i got this for under a hundred dollars for this cushion but as well i got these pillow cushions which basically i wanted these because i can't fit my pillows where my bed is, and I'll show you guys that in a second, but I couldn't fit my pillows where my bed is. So what I needed to do is I basically wanted to have a place where I could store the pillows, that the pillows wouldn't get dirty. I didn't wanna have them wrapped in just another pillowcase that you have to take on and off every single day. So I thought, why not have something with a zipper that you could take your pillows in and out of? So this is just my regular sleeping pillow. I can take it out. Just pop it in very, very easily here. So I can just stick that back in like so. 
and then do the zipper up. The zippers are very nice on this. The quality is actually extremely nice. And they're matte black zippers, so it really ties in really nice. This is kind of like a very light sand color, so it ties into my place, into my concept really, really well. So one of these pillows, and it's nice because you can set them back in there. Nice place to sit on. Got a couple of like these just lounge cushions and then have a blanket here. Okay, so the couch isn't only just for lounging. It also has a storage function. So I have storage within three drawers that come across here. This first one is basically just clothes. And then my second one and third one right here. These are basically camera equipment. This is kind of loose camera equipment. This is just basically just dedicated to a charging drawer. So I have cables running to the back and down, plugging into an outlet that's just below the couch here. So I also have storage for hoodies and pants and things like that. So as I lift this up here, then pull this drawer out, it allows me access to pants and hoodies that are down in there so I can grab those and then just push this back in like so and then drop this back down. It's a little bit finicky, but that's kind of how that works. So underneath the couch here, I have lots of storage. So I have storage for different containers. Um, I have a tote full of clothes and then I also have like socks and stuff like that on top. So it's really nice just to like have this as like an extra low storage. So it's very easy to access with the double doors. You just pop those doors open, grab what you need, close them up. Under here, I also have a plug, which is where I plug all of my stuff in uh, for my charging drawer, as well as this is where my 12 volt fuse panel is. So that runs through this cord here. And then this hooks in to my Blue Eddy system and that runs my whole 12 volt system. It's really nice to have everything tucked away so nothing's gonna get snagged and it looks really clean. So I'm really happy that I added in all this like extra storage. This is kind of just for like miscellaneous stuff that needs to go somewhere. Um, the truck also has some storage in it, but this is kind of for more of like a daily use or things that I find valuable. So I uh, just stick that down in here and that's kind of my extra storage. So you might be wondering why in the world do I have a chair here? And I wanted another chair basically just to sit in if I kind of get tired of this place as like a seat. I wanted a place that would feel really homey, really comfortable. And it also comes with a leather stool so I can basically just sit in this chair, have my feet up, look out either of the windows. It's just a really comfortable position. But let's say that I want to go into work mode. Basically all I need to do is just lift this chair down and then lift this down, flip it on top of the chair. And now I have access to my desk. The nice thing about this desk is it's not impeding the space. So this whole area is more open and this whole concept of this build has been open space. Now, if I wanna use my desk for the day, I'm just gonna set this off to the side, back here, flip the desk up like so. You hear that it clips in. And so now it's nice and sturdy, set the laptop on it, set all your work stuff. And I actually have a computer chair that I can roll up here. It's just kind of out of the way just for filming purposes right now. But all I need to do is it's got two hinge clips right there, push it down like that. And now we're good to go. It's nice because I have an outlet here and here. I also have a ton of outlets on my Blue Eddy unit which I'll get into the Blue Eddy in a second, but it's just nice to have all of that centered around my workstation. Now, the question I'm sure you're asking is how in the world are you powering this thing? I chose to go with a different route than just your typical solar battery setup that you'll see on most YouTube channels. So how I'm powering this unit is with the Blue Eddy system. I have the AC300 and then the B300 units, so I have two B300 units, which are basically just my battery units. Each battery unit has 3,072 watts of storage. And then my AC300 is a 3,000 watt inverter. How I'm running power to the system is I just have a plug that's hooked in to the 30 amp plug here. And I just run that up through the ceiling over to my fuse panel, which is behind my clock, which I'll show you guys in a sec when we turn back that way. But for right now, we'll talk about this. This has six 20 amp plugs. You have your 12 volt 
DC plug, you have your USBs, you have your USB-C. And the nice thing is too, is these batteries actually have 12 volt functions too. So you can charge like things like your phone, all that stuff. It also has wireless charging on the top of the AC300 which is the inverter. But for the AC300 to work, it needs to be plugged into the batteries, which they plug into the sides here with these chunky cables. I decided to go with this setup ultimately for a couple reasons. I really like that they were lithium ion batteries rather than the lead acid batteries. And it's nice because I can take this below the 50% charge rate because with the other batteries, you don't really wanna go below 50% or else you're gonna decrease the lifespan of your batteries. With these, I can go below that 50% mark. And as well, these are really modular. It's nice to be able to take these around, take them out. If, for example, I go on a photo shoot and I need power wherever I'm going, I can just take these with me and I don't have to worry about you know, having to get power from like say a vehicle or something like that. These are really nice to just like take on the go and it's just super easy. So I wanted something with dual function, dual purpose. And as well, I'm not a pro when hooking up solar or electrical, all those things. So I needed something that was gonna be very basic, very easy that I could understand something that I could look up. And so this whole unit, this whole system was something that I could get on board with something that was easy. Yes, it was a little bit more expensive, but at the same time, I would definitely take this unit over just like your regular solar setup. I think a lot of people will start to get on board with this whole Blue Eddy unit. So up top, I just have my solar running through the ceiling and that connects to this panel. I made this box basically just to house all of the connectors because I just thought it kind of looked ugly. So just have the cable running down to the side here and that plugs in. The nice thing is this has a touch screen so I can see how many watts of solar I'm pulling in right now. It says that I'm pulling in around 300 and 15 watts roughly. And then I can see where both of my batteries are at. Uh, my one battery is at 40%, my other battery is at 21%. So they're just charging now. And then I can go back to the home screen. I can see how many watts are being pulled right now. So I have all my lights on in this thing just to get good lighting. I have my fridge running, um, I have the fan running, things like that. So this is pulling roughly around 142 watts. So that's not bad at all. That's pretty, pretty moderate. So overall, I find that if I get really good sunlight, this thing will charge in a full day. It'll charge both these batteries with the solar that I have. I have four 320 watt Renogy solar panels and they're just rigid solar panels. If there's anything that you guys wanna know about this Blue Eddy unit or anything else in the trailer, leave it in the comments below. And you can go down to the description, click on another link for my other YouTube channel because that's where I'm gonna be posting and answering some of the questions. I filmed the whole process of building this trailer. So I'll try and help you to give you as much information as possible but you can go to that channel. This is just specifically gonna be for photography, but go to that channel and I'll try and answer your questions there. Okay, so as I was saying, my 30 amp plug runs through the ceiling, comes across here, down here, and it comes actually to this fuse panel, which my clock hides, sticks to the wall with these 3M command strips. They're like really heavy duty Velcro. So this is where I have all my different runs here. This basically just runs everything that's 120 volt. I have my 12 volt DC underneath the couch, but this is where I have all of my 120. So it's really nice. You close it up and then hang the clock back on the wall. All you need to do is just push it in like so. Now, as we're in this area here, I'll show you this. This is my opening for my water fill. And the reason why I had the water fill inside instead of to the outside is because I was afraid that in the winter when I'm filling up the water, the water line might freeze or I might just have a bit of an issue with that. So I thought, well, if I can have my hose running in here, hook up to this, and then it just pumps right into my water tank, which is actually on the other side of this wall, which we'll get to in a sec. But this was just a really easy way to have the water fill you can just close that up and we're good to go. So to give you a bit of a tour on this front section here, so mounted on the wall here is my thermostat for my in-floor heating. I have quiet warmth in-floor heating. I have about five pads. I have two on the top, 
two in like the kitchen front area and then one in the bathroom area. And then this right here is my coat hanger. I love that it's kind of like this deer shape because I can hang my keys on the rack of the deer, which is kind of cool. So I've got that. Then I've got my snowboard hanging here on the side wall. Some people have said it's never gonna stay or it's just gonna like rattle right off the wall, but I haven't had any issue with it so far. Basically what's keeping it in, it's pinched between rubber door stops. Yeah, like it, it takes a bit of force to get that off the wall, but I'm not seeing any marks on the wall. So I think it should be all right. So all I need to do basically is just slide it down and then just give it a bit of a push down and now it's nice and snug again. So I really like this concept. It's just like a really nice, sleek way to keep my snowboard in here and as well, not gonna take up storage somewhere else. So if I can keep it on a wall and kind of have it as decor, I'm really happy with that. And then right here, I have a massive mirror. The nice thing is, is this thing lights up. It also has a heat mode for defog and things like that. So I can turn that off, turn that off. And it's nice because it has lights all around the side, all around the front, nice and big so I can fully see myself, which is great. And then we kind of did a bit of trim here. And this is just going over top of two cedar boards that I have here on the top and on the bottom. Basically, that's just keeping this mirror in place. So with having functionality in mind where I have a place to do all my work, I have a place to lounge, I have a place to read. I thought, okay, well, what is my best option for a bed? First of all, I thought, okay, maybe I could do a Murphy bed, which is very common. I could do a raised bed. I just didn't think they'd be super functional. And so I actually got this concept, which I'm about to show you here off of Pinterest from a tiny home. And this is something I've never seen built in to a trailer build or a van life build, anything like that. What I ended up doing is I have a full pullout bed. So what I do is I just have to get rid of this mat here at the kitchen. I have to fold up this mat here. And then I have a handle here on the front. I just give this a really good tug, really good pull and it comes right out. So this actually comes directly right out to the wall here, and this is where I sleep. So now I have a section of the platform that actually pops off, and with that being able to pop off from this point to that platform, now I have around 6'1", 6'2", in length, so I can stretch out fully and it's really comfortable. And then during the day after I'm done sleeping, it's a little bit heavy. I just give that a good push in like so. That just pushes all the way back to the back. And just like that, my bed's away. I just wanted to take a quick 30 second break to say that if you're interested in photography, I'm sharing my tips, tricks, and secrets here on YouTube that I've learned from over the years of doing photography. I believe that photography doesn't have to be complicated. That's why I'm giving you practical, actionable steps that are simplified to helping you take your best photos. That sounds like something you can get on board with. Hit the subscribe button. All right, let's get back to the tour. So we're switching to phone mode because it's pretty tight in the washroom and my 24 millimeter lens won't really cover this area, so. We're gonna use the phone just for now. So this is the mirror that I showed you guys. And then as we transition to the space, I have a max air fan. This is the dome. So just push that up. It also has a light on it, which is nice for say, if you get up in the night, you have to use the washroom. You're not just like blasting yourself with like really bright lights. I also have some hooks here, which is perfect for hanging towels, things like that. Um, and then this area right here, this is just for my hair dryer. So this is just kind of like a bit of a shelf, a few cups for like a hairbrush, things like that. And then this is a collapsible garbage, just like what I had in the kitchen, but right now it doesn't have a garbage bag. I just have like soap and the cord wrapped up for my hair dryer. I don't really know if I'm gonna add a garbage bag in here. I don't know if it's necessary. I kind of like it just to like hold stuff like that. So I just leave it. So down here in the shower is a compostable toilet. It has a urine diverter. So that just basically sits in here and then I can move it out of the shower whenever I need to take a shower. And then for whenever I'm taking a shower, I have this nice curtain 
which like comes across like that. It's just on rails. I got these rails actually off Amazon for, I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. It was super cheap. And I was able just to like screw it into the ceiling here. And this was a really good option for me because I was trying to figure out what was going to work to fit the space because the shower is kind of like at a bit of like a different angle here. And so I needed something that was going to cover the whole space so that water wouldn't get outside of the shower. And then on the walls of my shower is just my flooring that I use throughout this whole area. And I decided to go with something like this because it's going to be a lot lighter than using tiles and as well as waterproof and super durable. So I thought that this would be a good choice for me. But the flooring here in the shower is actually tile here. And it's meant to look like kind of like that marbly look with like a bit of like a gray run through it and really, really happy with how that turned out. And then right here, I have my shower head that can come off, put it back on. I don't have much clearance for headroom when I'm standing in here, but it does the job. All right, going over to this area here, I have a sliding door, which leads me into the water closet. So this water closet houses a 30 gallon water tank. It houses my water pump, my accumulator, my ventless hot water tank and as well my propane tank. This is an 11 pound propane tank, I believe. That's really nice and I just have like a few storage things in here. It's not super functional. I wish I could have used this space for a little bit more, but it was kind of coming down to the wire and I had to decide like what I was gonna use the space for. So I decided to go with that. I have a plug in there to basically like charge my water pump whenever it needs to be on and work. So it's just nice, slide this door across like that. I painted all this actually when I was watching Mission Impossible. So it was kind of one of those fun little projects that I thought, ah, oh, I'm gonna take the time for. So I ended up doing that. Massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Bender's Mobile Detailing. They've been a big supporter of mine with the build of this trailer and they really cleaned up my truck really nice before I got on the road. Currently I'm in the desert of Utah at the Valley of Gods. And if you're interested in seeing more about my travels and what I'm up to, hit the subscribe button and I'll be back to you guys soon. Peace.